When I think of Sardinia, I picture sandy beaches, crystal clear waters and seaside towns. But there is so much more to this wonderful island. And despite this being my home when I'm over in Italy, there are still many places right here on the island of Sardinia that I've never visited. In this series, I'll be traveling around Sardinia's most remote and mountainous regions to meet the locals, Come explore their way of life, we make in pecorino, and of course, cook some delicious local recipes. Enjoy and buon appetito. Now, you all know how much I love wine, and you also know that I make my own wine. I'm here in this beautiful town of Calangianus, where they make something very useful for a winemaker like myself. No, it's not the grapes for the wine, and no, it's not the glass for the bottles. Actually, what this town is famous for is this, cork. And I'm going to find out exactly how it's made. Known in Italy as Sughero, cork is one of Sardinia's most abundant natural resources, with the island generating nearly 80% of the corks used in Italy. Today, I'm meeting one of the region's biggest producers. What I really want to know, why Sardinian cork is so special? Sardinia is in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, and yeah. the temperature is perfect to cork forest. And how many corks do you produce a day? More or less every day, we produce two million corks. Wow, that's a lot of cork, but I really want to see how it's made. This is the first step of the process, the boiling. Okay. So the cork goes underwater? Yes. For how long? Uh, 45 minutes. We make it flat, All right. and with the system, we clean the cork. Can I touch it? Yes, you can. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's quite like soggy, it's yeah, spongy. It's a, it's spongy yeah. Next, Giuseppe tells me we are off to sniff some cork. I've never heard of sniffing cork, but I'm guessing we're going to find out. So every piece of cork, then after the boiling, is cut a part of the cork and sniffing to find something wrong. I, I, I just want to see if I can sniff anything. So this is okay. good. I smell of cork. Yes. Normal cork. OK. I smell of cork. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure he's not taking the mic? No, no, I'm just, sure. He, he just throws them no, whatever no, no. he wants. I'm sure, I'm sure. And what do you do with the one that is not good? That we used to make uh, isolation for the house or the part of the shoes. So you don't throw anything away? No, no, no. And from sniffing cork to something that looks more familiar. So at the moment you got a cork ring. Yes. That's where you go. And, and each an individual chose by him. It's still done by hand. Yes, it's still by, by hand because the, the man can see the defect. The machine cannot see. That's why. So they can yes. see all the this little small details. Things, the yes. Do you like your job? Yes. I bet you when he goes home and the wife asks him to open a bottle yes. of wine, he hates it. <laughs> I'm going to take this with me yes. because my wife asked me for a cork ring. Okay, we go. And, uh... Now I've learned everything I need to know about cork, I'm going to show you how to make a vegetable risotto right here in the middle of the uh, cork trees. Okay, and where do we start? It's right here. Nice pan, first thing that goes in there is olive oil. Once the oil is piping hot, add in some chopped rosemary. You just want to get the flavor into the oil. Now for the vegetables, add the chopped peppers, onion and crochets to the pan and season with salt. You know, making a risotto is one of those jobs that the first thing that you should do, pour yourself a nice glass of wine, put a bit of music on, forget about everything else, focus on the flavor on this beautiful pot. That's what you have to do. Fry off the vegetables for five minutes before adding the rice. Usually you do one handful per portion. Like this, so I'm gonna do a portion for four. Now coat the rice with the hot oil for a few minutes until it becomes translucent before adding the wine. Many people will make the mistake to add the wine after the stock. That is a huge mistake because when you cook with wine, you need to make sure that the alcohol evaporates away. So add the wine and wait for about two minutes. Once the rice has absorbed the wine, you are ready to add the stock. This is the secret of the risotto. This is when you have to be patient. You put one ladle of the stock, stir the rice and the vegetable. When you see that the stock is completely been absorbed by the rice, then you add one more. And you need to keep doing this 
for about 15 to 17 minutes. After all the stock is absorbed, add the piece in last. Now, often people, they ask me, how do you make the risotto creamy? There is only one way to do this. And in Italian, we call it mantecatura. Mantecatura is when you get butter and cheese, good quality salted butter that goes in there, and straight away, we're going to add half of the cheese. Look at that. I am super happy with this. And I think in honor of Giuseppe, I think it's only fair that I'm gonna serve the risotto in one of his cork, right? Serve up and garnish with a sprig of rosemary, a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese, and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. That's it, guys. And this is how you make the perfect risotto in the perfect location, right here on the island of Sardinia. Buon appetito.